Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online. And in today's video, as promised, I'm going to be talking about the budget science tank builds inside of the game. Now, um, budget science is actually really hard to do inside the game, and I'll talk about that in a little bit in this video. But I'll, I'll, I'll recap first um, how budget builds work. I'll talk about the species traits and bridge officers in, in this video. I'll talk about in very short amount of time that the, some of the difficulties with science and they get into their consoles and weapons available um, for this stuff in this video now uh, i'm only going to be showing off really one build um, there are actually going to be five links to five different um, science ships inside the game in the, the description there's going to be the one from the exchange that, that I, i'll be showing there'll be the one for each uh, uh, faction inside the game federation klingon around the republic if you're a, a Dominion captain, I'm, I'm just going to be assuming that you're going to be choosing the science version of the Tier 5 ship that you, you can choose after you, you, you finish your first mission. Anyway, um, links for all that is going to be in, in the description along with time links for everything. So first off, just as for a quick recap, um, that's basically the same as the last budget build video. Um, budget builds is kind of a fluid term. Um, we haven't really defined it much in the, in the S2O community. It varies a lot as to like, you know, are we are we going to include sea store stuff? Are we going to include fleet? One of our are we, are we going to include reputation? Are we going to, are we going to say that it, can you use stuff from missions? Can you use stuff from, you know, these ships that are from events, um, and those types of things? Or are, are you are you going to say, oh, only stuff from missions and that's it, which is the most limiting? Um, unfortunately, for science stuff only from missions doesn't work. So I'm going to be using the same guidelines that, that I used in my last budget video, which is things you can get on your own, no upgrading. And so, yeah, that basically means we will include um, research and, and, and development things, stuff from re re reputations, stuff from missions and stuff that and traits that you can get either just inherently as as an alien captain inside the game and, and the stuff that's earnable through your specializations. We will not be including anything from the fleet um because that requires social interaction and they are actually deceptively pretty expensive and i will go into math in terms of terms of why next week um duty officers for kind of a similar reason it's kind of more for simplicity's sake honestly but yes i mean like there are some duty officers that you can you can earn but um you have to do a lot of grinding and a lot of looking of, of where the duty officers they really want as to where, where they actually are this build is actually perfectly fine without duty officers. Funny enough, I actually figured out a way to get coulons good enough for science, and I'll get into that later in this video. I'll, I'll also not be including anything from the exchange, and no, nothing from lockbox, nothing from low buy, and none of those purchasable traits either, which the traits is actually what hurts us the most in this build. I also won't be including any event starships or items um, in, in this build whatsoever, and none of the traits from those. It, it's just because, I mean, like, if you got them during the event, then obviously they're super cheap because you can just claim for free. If you didn't get them during the event, you have to use, use Phoenix Lockbox to get them. And to be honest, the cost to get stuff from Phoenix Lockbox in terms of its probability is, is about as bad as getting a ship from the exchange. Like re, like really look look at the cost of getting a ship from the exchange for is basically the same cost, if not worse, than something from Phoenix Lockbox. So in my opinion, after the event is over, one of those starships is actually worse than a lot of your regular tier 6 starships from, from the exchange. But that's just my opinion personally, so it's not going to be in, in, in these builds whatsoever. Now for character and bridge officers, I, again, my suggestion is, is, is an alien female. In this one, I am specifically saying you really should be choosing science. Science has a lot of synergies with EPG builds in space. You can also do EPG stuff on ground super easily. Science is, is really, really easy to do ground combat in basically all circumstances because their, their kits are non-modulatable, so that's really nice against the board, and it's just really nice and simple. You don't, you don't even need to upgrade your weapons too much to be able to do elite content for science. Just have really strong consoles and a, a really strong kit module, oh, um, kit frame, sorry, and, and you're fine. Um, aliens are available to everyone besides TOS captains and Gemini captains, but for this build, I'm actually only, only going to be showing off nine traits because there isn't really a tenth trait that's really worthwhile for science space, but that's just my opinion. For bridge officers themselves, if you're a Roman captain, 
get five Romulans for space that are superior Romulan operatives. Um, or four is fine if you're wanting to have four optimal ground uh, bridge officers. Just because, I mean, if, if you're a true free-to-play player, you're only going to have eight bridge officer slots. And one of them is already gone to Tovan Kev, who you, who you can't get rid of. So, you know, if you use Tovan for space and ground, maybe that's four SROs and then Tovan, who's just a regular Romulan op operative. And that's and that's okay, honestly. For Federation and Klingon captains, the op optimal way to go is to get the hierarchy officer from the Delta Quadrant. And then either to get four humans alongside that if you're a Federation captain or four pirate officers if you're a Klingon captain. For, 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 for Federation captains, you're already gonna have your tactical officer as, as, as a human that you can easily slot in the space slot there. And so you're not gonna be losing anything for that. For Klingons, it's a little, it's a little bit more costly to be honest, but not really a gigantic deal, honestly. Now for the starships, in my previous budget tank video, I, I said it'd be the Voth Bastion, and then for this video, it'd be the Tholian or Weaver. However, we recently just got the tier six version of, of the Tholian or Weaver, and now the Tholian, the Tholian tier five ship is now unavailable to claim anymore. Because of this, um, are some of the greedy people on the exchange have said, oh, well, that means this ship is much more valuable now. Well, it, it was always a good ship to start off with. It was the only science ship from the exchange that had a free t tier 5 U up upgrade. But no one was noticing it until we got the tier 6 Tholian um, ship. <sighs> Whatever. Um, because of that, the only science ship left from the exchange now is the Luke Lucari scout ship. Sure, there's the mirror universe science ships. However, those honestly aren't any better than the tier five science ships that you can get from your faction. And those ones will be the ones that I will have in the, the description. And those ones you can already get for free anyway. This one you can get for like about eight or nine million on the exchange right now for PC. It was always quite a bit more expensive than the Tholian ship, but this is the only one really left now. So this is the one I'm using in this build. Um, whatever. For, for the space race themselves, the two really good ones that you really, really, really should have. First off, number one is Power Glove Manipulator. Um, you get a lot of crit chance and crit severity on your exotic abilities based upon your 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 skill in, in exotic Power Glove Generators. You don't get any more crit chance after 250 EPG, but your crit severity can keep it going up as much as, much as you want. I mean, you're not going to... Well, I'm not going get, to get into that, but... Um, it, 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 in this build, even without fleet um, science consoles, I actually do get above 250 EPG on this ship still. So I personally feel that's about the bar to set for science builds. If you can get the 250 EPG, your ship will be okay. Maybe not not for elite content, but it will it will be okay. Now, for as a science tank captain, conservation of energy is basically just a free additional 30% bonus exotic damage. You get additional exotic damage whenever you're hit with energy attacks, which most enemies in the game are going to do some, some sort of energy attack against you. So if you're tanking most of the hits, yeah, you, it's it's a free 30% bonus exotic um, damage to, to your ship. Pretty simple. For the rest of these, in many ways, they're pretty lackluster. But and if you look at the SG Reddit traits list, they would say. You should be putting all of these things on your ship way instead for, for tanking. The problem is all of these are traits from the exchange. As thus, we can't use them on this build. So these are the other traits that are really the best ones left available to us that for, for complete free-to-play captains that are not using anything off, off of the exchange. If you want any stuff from the exchange, sure, so some of those traits would be very 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 much worthwhile for you to consider and put on your ship and for my science tank all five of those traits are on are on her ship but whatever anyway uh, for the starship traits themselves this is quite a bit different than um my budget tank video i mean i still have go, go going the extra mile for passive um shield and whole healing 
I still have unconventional tactics, but I now have two different traits in nonlinear progression and arrest. Nonlinear progression, it's the exact opposite of, um, of, of pedal to the metal. For science tanking, you, you, you can't be at full impulse the whole time. It just doesn't work for, for a lot of your abilities. You need to be, need to be able to have your enemies constantly in, in front of you. It's just really how it, it works. And with stuff like gravity well, it's not that hard to do. And with really high control expertise, by the way. Um, after five seconds, you get an insane amount of hole and shield um, regen regeneration per second. Instead of per six seconds, like most shield regeneration, this is per second, which actually means if you have a decent level in shield restoration, this is actually better shield regeneration than a typical shield array inside the game. And I say typical because we actually are going to be using a shield array for this build. That's actually better than the one that I'm that I was using for my science tank video in the past for this specific ship. You do get some recharge time to craft abilities as well if you get the full 30 points in the specialization, which you should because this is from Temporal Operative, which is the damage one in, in the game for science. Now, if for specializations, I mean, sure, if you're a DPS science captain, you would want Temporal Operative primary, and then probably something like Intel or Strategist as your secondary. For tanking, the Tier 3 and Tier 4 for Temporal Operative doesn't really benefit us at all. The tier three stuff only benefits energy damage and the tier four stuff doesn't ever proc because we, we're always having a threatening stance on. The thing doesn't, the tier four ability does not work when you have threatening stance. So the secondary gives us everything that we would that we want with temporal operative. The tier one, tier two stuff is great. The extra 50 exotic power generator from this association is also nice. And then miracle worker by and large is the best tanking specialization in the entire game and so having that as a primary gives us everything we want from this and we still get the benefits of what we want from temporal op operative um, the trait arrest is from the constable specialization and um, this is this shores up a lot of our cooldowns it doesn't solve everything but it helps a lot with our cooldowns so if you go into a battle and spam a lot of your really high cooldown abilities as long as um, your your target dies you can easily switch to a smaller target after you've hit a big one by the way as long as that target you have currently selected dies then boom you you get a significant re recharge time to um, your bridge officer abilities it can only happen once every 30 seconds i think that should be buffed a little bit but that's just me um but it still works especially for budget where we don't have duty officers don't have um nice starter traits to help with cooldowns this is basically a best in slot for science builds okay you really should as long as you eventually get our specializations up this is a starter trait that you should be highly considering to put on your ship for traits um this is the same as the last video this is especially important because whenever you, you look look at a lot of stuff for the for the ship because it's not a tier 5 u ship it's a tier 5 ship we need this stuff to get the stats comparable to what the tier 5 view would have been otherwise. Chrono, Chrono Capacitor just helps with bridge officer abilities a little bit more. The rest of the stuff is all is all defense. And yep, I forgot to put the um, the picture for the quantum singular manipulation. That's really nice to just buff EPG a little bit more right before you use anti-time um, entanglement. Whenever you use this ability, this scales with EPG and it's even more powerful um, if you use Quantum Singularity right before you use anti-time entanglement. Biomolecular and the Poison Sensor Interface are also nice defensive ones too. Aren't particularly needed, but they're nice to have too. Um, and, and here's the ships. Um, here's, here's, here's the two main ones that I'll have for this video. I will also have links to the ship for each faction that I consider the best for science. Um, for for the free to play leveling starship or free to play ships that you you get through leveling inside the game. Um, this is the uh, Lucarian Nikam without the tier five view upgrade, and here's the raw stats for it. It's actually at thirty nine thousand hull, despite the fact that its base hull is twenty seven thousand. That's because we have so many defensive uh, stuff and enhancing hull on, on this ship that its hull can get really close to the 40,500, which is what 
this thing would have for its whole if you had the, the tier 5 you upgrade for it. Additionally, for science-based skills, we have 265 exotic particles generated on, on this ship, despite not having a single console on, on here that is from the fleet at all. Okay, no consoles from the fleet, we're still up, up there in EPG. Now, um, if, if you're going to invest in anything better than this ship and free to play, and you're not in, interested in the fleet starships, like if you, like if you were considering stuff for, from the exchange, I would highly recommend instead use, using money and buying the 31st century temporal ship bundle and using the temporal multi-mission science vessel. You get a really nice um, EPG um, console with it. Plus you can also use the console from the cruiser which is a really nice console that gives you a taunt, plus a heal, plus after a few seconds, it gives you additional damage as well. Um, the two piece isn't particularly valuable for, for the build, but the two consoles in and of themselves are both very, very strong for science tanking. Of course, this console, this um, console from the cruiser plus the console off of the Raider, is also a really strong two piece console for DPS beam tanking as well. So it's, it's, it's a really well-rounded um, group of ships um, from the sea store if, if you're going to be considering tanking or just general survival in the game at all. And of course, want ships that anyone can use on, on your account, regardless of, of faction or allegiance. Again, it's still 265 EPG just because we aren't using fleet consoles and, and we still want some defense on, on this ship too. As you see here, there's some interesting stuff we have for the sets that's different than what I have for my other science ship um, on this channel. But anyway, um, if, if you're curious about why I, I'm suggesting this ship over something from the exchange, I do have I do have a link right up, up here that um, is to a different channel who has covered this in pretty good depth in terms of the costs of, of different tier six starships inside of the game, from exchange to sea store, promotional, all that stuff, and what the equivalent cost really would, would be in um, US dollars. But anyway, for the space sets themselves, if, if you're going for, for mission stuff, um, this is one option that you, you could use. Um, the Solnay Deflector is, is one of the best deflectors for DPS inside the game. It gives you really good EPG and drain, which is really nice. Um, the Zenkethi Warp Core from the Melting Pot mission is still a very solid um, Warp Core. For, for defense inside the game for extreme budget and it probably is one of the best ones in the game because this is solid the sh shield capacitor is pretty solid and that it gives you some shield resistance plus especially in this build because we value epg really highly if 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 using this power um, fixes a shield off offline um it gives you an additional 50 epg for 15 seconds so you're so your science abilities do even more damage. Now, Cryptic was definitely intending for the Quantum Phase 3-piece from the Stormbound mission to be there for like a budget survival build. When I was looking at a lot, a lot of the builds from missions, that's what it appeared that this set was for. Um, like a lot of stuff in the shield, that a lot of your offensive science stuff gives you healing. The 2-piece gives you some resistance to shields and some actual capacity. But the ship, this shield doesn't have shield resistance in the first place, so that's a problem. In my opinion, the set that's a little bit better to put in its place here, oops, sorry, would be um, the Soul Defense two piece from the Midnight mission, because you get shield resistance, you still get shield healing, and um, some additional enhancements of shield healing that you get from the Quantum Phase. Um, the engines are actually better, and that you get some additional defense whenever you, you're, you're hit, which since we're going to be at science tank. We're going to be hit a lot. So you're going to get a lot of additional defense in turn rate too. Plus the two piece gives you, especially at the budget end, additional damage which reduces resistance rating as well. Because you're not going to have traits like honor, dead, or history will remember. Having some additional innate resistance to our ship is, is actually going to be pretty valuable. And because we don't have as many consoles as, as we would otherwise, we're down two consoles. We aren't going to have the room to have a lot of really good defensive stuff for, for the ship built into the ship itself. Now, when it comes to reputations, um, the two best ones, in my opinion, for science would be first off the temporal defense four piece, which is what we're using on this ship. Or if you're willing to get stuff to Mark 15 Epic, 
The one that I say for science tank in particular is slightly better would be the, the Lucari Restoration 4-piece. In basically almost all other cases, the Temporal Defense one is just better. Um, the, the Deflector is very solid for, for defense and offense. The Combat Impulse Engines gives you has, has a debuff every time you heal yourself. The Shield Array is also one of the best shield arrays, or regeneration shield arrays in the entire game because the cell rate regeneration doubles whenever you whenever your shield facing um, goes to zero zero percent. Plus, it has some some base um, resistance to shields too. It is only the warp core that's a little bit lackluster, and that's why the Lucari would beat it out at Mark Market 15 Epic, in my opinion. But this, the set bonuses are also very good for this ship too. The two piece set is the reason why you see um, t this um, two piece on most DPS science ships in the game. Because it gives you a 25% amp to all damage over time and hazard effects, which is a vast majority of, of the science abilities inside the game. It also affects radiation builds too, so you, that's why you see this on radiation builds as well. The three piece um, is just nice, um, not particularly optimal, but it's nice to have whenever you use engineering, and science, and tactical team to get some additional control expertise too. The four piece is um, temporal fracture, which is a clickable which is a hole, which which is good for threat, plus uh, its damage scales with EPG. So it's another um, damage ability that you, you can use with, with your higher e e EPG on your ship. Now for some honorable mentions for uh, other reputation sets, the first off I'm, I'm going to mention is the Dyson Joint Command 4 piece. When I was experimenting with stuff, I was realizing this is actually a very durable, very strong science set. Um, not particularly as strong in the, the, the deflector, but it's still decent. It still does what it needs to. The combat engines are a little bit lackluster, but the shield, uh, sorry, the warp, the warp core is much better. Its shield capacitor gives you some good stuff here too. But this whole set revolves around the shield array, which doesn't really happen with, with most sets inside the game. Um, so the shield array passively already has 10% shield resistance and is, is reduced by another, another 67% um, whenever you um, whenever a shield facing goes down, plus it's healed a bunch. Plus, prior to that, if you have the four piece set, whenever shield facing goes below 50%, you get you know, reduction to damage to shields by 50% for 15 seconds. And so for a lot of the time in combat, if you have the full four piece set, your shield array is gonna be really, really durable. Um, without really even trying. Just with the four piece, your shield array is going to be very durable. Uh, with, with other sets that I've mentioned in this video and my science tank video um, previously, the other ones are, are pretty durable if you're proactive um, with, with, with your abilities. This one, you don't have to do anything really. You can just let your shields take the beating and they'll automatically start getting the resistances that, that, that they need when, when they need them. Um, so yeah, um, oh yeah, and additionally on the Proton Barrage, yes, this obviously scales with Proton Damage. This strangely enough also scales with Exotic particle Generator when I, when I was testing this thing. So this is another clickable ability that um, scales with EPG that you have on your ship. The other honorable implementation is the Simulated Borg 3-piece, which you would add with the Zenkethi Warp Core just for some additional durability. Um, this, is, this was the OG um, tank um, set inside the game. It's got a bazillion um, stuff in its two-piece and three-piece set. Most notably for this video is that the simulated tractor beam scales with EPG as well as, well as control. So it's, it's another clickable ability that, that gives you high threat. Um, we don't have the kinetic cutting beam, so we don't have synergy with that, but the rest of the stuff is still decent too. I, I don't consider this quite as good as the other ones just because a lot of the value of, of this set We've, we've, we've kind of lost nowadays. We have a lot of things in this set which are just better in other sets now. People will still use this set um, at, at times for these for um, for tour of the galaxy, um, but really outside of that or for the looks of, 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 of this set, you're not really going to see this set too much anymore inside the game. Okay, so... Now to get into this, so budget science is really hard inside the game. 
and I'm not saying just because we aren't getting fleet consoles, but it's just because of just because statistically by base stats. And we're saying like even when we, when we take this part of, of fleet science consoles out, the raw stats of the consoles themselves are just superior because let, let's let's talk about these two consoles for instance. Let's talk about a drain console because I, I have this on, on, on the screen. So if, if we have a science console that's focused on, on drain, you would if, if this was very rare, Mark 12, um, it, it would be 30, 31.9 because it's it's ultra rare, where that most fleet stuff is. Um, what what you get is your 30 of of, of your uh, of your main skill, plus you get 20 of, of a secondary skill. Now for basically all of, all of your crafted consoles inside the game, it's just 30 of, of your main skill and that's it. Because fleet consoles have not only this extra proc, but a full of a main skill and two thirds of a secondary science skill, you are getting a an insane amount of value from fleet consoles that you're really not gonna be able to equate to very many other consoles in the entire game. Basically, almost all of your regular drop and craftable science consoles are completely inferior, inferior and suck inside the game as a result of this. And so all of my budget science consoles that I'm suggesting in, in this video are going to be unique consoles, and they're going to have some quirk with them that gets at least some of these base stats kind of back into it that you wouldn't have otherwise on regular consoles. I think this is partly because this a lot of this was based upon the old science system in Star Trek Online. That's why we have three consoles that give you control, two consoles, and two consoles that give you drain. And they both do all do the exact same thing, even though these three things all have different names, but they do the exact same thing. Whatever. Um, I I'll, I'll talk about next week on, on how Cryptic could adjust this to make it better, but that's just. But of course, that'll just be another suggestion that I sent to them that they'll probably ignore entirely, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, um, whenever we, we get into the budget consoles for science, we obviously are not using fleet consoles because as, as I said, we are not considering fleet budgets. And I'll talk about that next week as well. Um, so first off, we're on um, the temporal disentanglement suite because of the um, R&D 15 science um, trait, we're already gonna have 50 critical chance, 50% critical chance on this ship already. So the real value of this console is in the shield capacity and shield resistance. That is where this value really comes from, especially in, in the shield resistance. More shield resistance means that your shields stay up longer, which means that you survive longer because in science ships, generally you have really high shields and really low hull. So basically whenever your shields go down, you completely die. So you need those, those shields up longer without good traits to keep your life easier. Having more shield resistance in your, in, in your build is really nice. Now for the next console, the temporarily shielded data core, this was actually buffed significantly since I covered this last on the channel. They added some significant EPG to the console, which actually means, funny enough, if, if you take out the um, the proc from the from the fleet consoles, this is actually equivalent to regular stats from a fleet console for science. You you get 20 control and 20 EPG, and instead of like extra 10 EPG or 10 control, you get a lot of additional damage resistance rating on, on your ship, Spe specifically in the physical and kinetics, so torpedoes and mines can't kill you and one-shot you as easily inside the game. So, I mean, even for, I would probably say, mid-end builds that are struggling a little bit with survival, that, that can't do enough damage fast enough so that the enemies can't kill you easily, this is a decent console that you, you can sub in for a fleet console even to add a little bit more survival to your ship. Something that I would highly recommend to put on, on a, lot, a lot of your ships anyway. If you have something like Honor Dead from the Exchange, then sure, you you don't need this console, but this is still something that that, that, that is really nice to have. The Emitter re Refocuser from the Re Renegade's Regret is a decent shield healing console. It gives you 30 shield restoration, like we do from a regular shield restoration console from crafting, but it also gives you some drain expertise too, which is very, very close to the 3020 from um, fleet consoles of, of what you would want there. Um, the value, the rest of the value of this is from Tetrion damage. Unfortunately, in this build, we don't have Tetrion damage, and so we're actually not going to use this console. But if we had Tetrion damage, then yeah, this this would be a very optimal choice to have. 
For a lot of your Zenkethi ships, this is very, very nice to have. Um, the Exotic Particle Field Exciter um, gives you 30 um, EPG and 20% maximum shield capacity. Um, sure, with the Field Exciter, we're getting additional 10% weapon power. Um, sure, we don't have that many energy weapons on our ship, that we're, and we're not primarily using that for our damage. And so the Field Exciter isn't quite as valuable on this ship. I mean, it's, it's still nice to have. Because it's better than a regular craftable EPG console that's just 30 EPG and that's it. But um, the value of this console would really come from whenever you, you get it to Epic Mark 15. Because at that point, you, you get 30 EPG. Well, it'd be like 39 point something EPG. And you get that 39 point something of some other random skill. It could be another EPG, control, drain, healing, shield cap, something. But um, yeah, at, at that point... This one actually would become very competitive with um, the fleet stuff, but at Mark 12, it's not as as competitive, honestly. An another console with that isn't science, but I will put in science slot for this build is the assimilated module because it gives you control expertise along with some crit severity and some additional whole regen to keep, just to keep yourself alive a little bit easier um, inside of this build. For our engineering consoles, um, I, I have four here. In, in this build, we only have slots for two engineering consoles. So um, the one the first one that I'll have in, in this build is the is Trail MD Play, just because it gives you hull capacity, it gives you shield capacity, and because we have and because we're full in ox power, this ox to shields is going to add a lot of shield power to our ship. We do have damage resistance ready. It's not as valuable because we um, have the Soul Defense two piece, but because we're not going to have something like Honor Dead as the Starship trade for for this ship, or Repair Crews in our regular space traits list, um, th this is still nice to have on our ship too. Um, the other console that I have in, in my build is the um, Conductive RCS Accelerator. Um, that is because, not only really for the flight turn rate, but because whenever you're healed, you get an additional 10% shield resistance. And so, as I said, for, for science, tanking, if your shields go down, you basically die. So you need your shields to be up. And this adds more shield resistance. That's up 50% of the time because we're going to have some heals that's going to be constantly be going on. Uh, these, uh, these other two consoles, I, I would have if, if this this is a beam tank. Um, House Martok is really nice. Reinforced Artemis is really nice. But this isn't a beam tank, and so we, we don't really need them as much. If we had an option for a third en engineering slot, I would put House Martok first because we don't need power transfer rate as much on, on this particular build because it's mainly torpedo and exotic based. For our tactical consoles, uh, the one that you'll see on basically any tactical build is going to be the chronometric capacitor just because it, it's, it gives you EPG in, 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 in specifically at that tactical slot. However, on, on this particular build, the torpedo damage and polar damage is also really nice because our front weapons will all be torpedoes. And our rear rub weapons will all be Polaron weapons. So you actually get basically full value from this console on, on this build, which is really nice. The Nakara Particle Converter from Nakara Strike Force Reputation. Um, it was nerfed slash buffed um, a, a little while ago. I can't remember the exact date of when it was, but it was, it was a decent while ago. Like when I started the game, I actually use one of one of my universe versal consoles on, on my old Cobali Sandstar Cruiser for the Nukari Particle Converter because it used to give 10% um, damage with, with beam weapons. Now it only now they changed that to make it 10 accuracy with beam weapons. But they added a little bit more EPG to this console kind of in consolation. Which means that this is actually another place to get EPG for your starship. So that's that's why this is here. It gives you some EPG and drain. It's not as valuable as, per se, a fleet science console or something like that. So I can't really put it in the fleets or in the um, the science console place in this video. But you do, but I mean, you you definitely could if if you wanted to. Um, the other slot I have here for tactical is is the Bioneural Gel Pack. Um, it does give a little bit of shield capacity. The value of this comes from the two piece and three piece set. Combine that, this gives additional cooldown reduction to bridge officer abilities, which is really nice for this build. The two piece gives us reduction to the new trap torpedo, which is what we're going to have in one of our front slots. 
plus three piece is the iso is the iso kinetic cannon which is a clickable ability which does 100 shield penetration kinetic damage that scales with exotic particle generators so it's, it's another clickable that we we can use to do additional damage with with our um really high damage skill for our front weapons here's the three torpedoes that i would recommend to put there the government government torpedo is probably one of the best torpedoes in the entire game in general even if you don't have high heat epg a torpedo spray can give you gravity wells, which, which can give you some control on, on the battlefield. That's really nice. It's it's also, honestly, the best EPG torpedo as a result, because it scales with EPG as well. The Intractable Torpedo from Delta Reputation is also nice, too. If you want to switch one of the torpedoes with an energy weapon in, in the front, this is the one that I would switch out, honestly. Particle Emission does a little bit more in terms of damage, in my opinion. But that's just me personally. Um, it's all, all of these are, are great for damage overall. I like to use torpedo spread. If if you're someone who likes to use, use torpedo high heal, there are a couple other al alternatives. But I mean, we're, we're talking about budget and easiest ways to be to be effective in in the game. So we're not going to be talking about torpedo high yield stuff in this video. Really, just because I don't like torpedo high yield, you have to make sure you time out the torpedoes correctly and. I'm not someone who has the patience to do that, so I'm not really an expert to talk about that, so I'm not going to talk about it. And I think that's really fair for you all, because why would someone who's not kind of an expert in an area be telling you how to, how to fly your starship better? That just doesn't make any sense. Like, it, it, it would be like a regular college student teaching another college student of the exact same knowledge about something. It just doesn't work. For the rear, rear weapons, all of these weapons here are energy weapons, but they're here more for, for the set bonuses instead of actually doing raw damage for this ship. You actually, you actually are, are going to see that this lot for torpedo builds, and that because torpedoes don't have any 360 degree weapons, um, your rear, rear weapons for all torpedo builds are going to be weapons that have some sort of set bonuses that, that enhance the build. And for um, for this, we have the chronometric Polaron. Um, um, we have two beam rays from the Time and Tide mission that gives us a three piece bonus uh, that gives us a, a clicky for additional EPG. The other um, console in this set is the, um, the chronometric capacitor, which, as I said here in this part right here, this is the weapon that basically every science build is going to have in, in their build anyway. So, Alongside that value, you, you add two weapons that gives you a clicky for additional exotic damage, which, which is nice. Additionally, for the third weapon slot in, in the back, I have the Thoron Infused Polar Beam Ray, which um, synergizes well with the Neutron Torpedo and Vironor Gel Pack to give us a clicky for even more isokinetic cannon damage. So that's nice. Which is clearly clicky that you wouldn't have a, a, otherwise on your ship. So, yeah. Um, for for the raw stats of this ship, by the way, because I because I didn't share this yet, um, the raw stats of this ship is 27,000 hull. The hull ratio would, would be 0 0.9 if you you had the tier 5 you upgrade on this ship. However, in my opinion, if you're even considering putting buying that upgrade, you might as well just buy the 31st century temporal ship bundle, and then you have access to a better ship in almost every way, um, stat wise and everything for all of your characters instead of just an upgrade for one character on on your account for for the bridge officer seats themselves i would recommend in this build to have the commander science the lieutenant commander to be an engineering to have a lieutenant science and then a lieutenant and ensign science or lieutenant commander a lieutenant tactical and then lieutenant and ensign science for the bridge officer seats themselves we'll start with with the engineering one first and to have so I suggest an engineering team and aux to structural integrity field. This ability scales with with your aux power, so that's really really nice. I mean, it also scales with whole healing skill as well. But because you have high aux power, this is extremely valuable to have for a science ship. And additionally, uh, for the last slot, to have reverse ship polarity too, because that's just really nice. For our tactical seat, just having tactical team and torpedo spread is good enough. Uh, you don't necessarily need a third tactical ability. I mean, you definitely could make a third tactical ability, but at least in my testing, 
without the, without the tier five you upgrade you really need that second heal honestly over a, a, another damage tactical ability it, you just need more of it for for the science abilities themselves i have photonic officer 2 in this build for extra cooldowns just to help shore out a lot of this stuff inside the game photonic officer was also recently buffed um right after it was almost like a week or two after it, i talked about these science abilities inside the game they, they did talk about that if, if you go to that science abilities video i i would have talked about the old photonic officer and then i was saying that photonic officer was meant for budget builds now with with the buff plus the new tray from the tier 6 billion ship it is now a viable cooldown um trait inside the game and for those of you that are doing energy builds if you happen to have a ship for instance that is stuck with a lieutenant commander science you can easily do photonic officer on on the ship and it's very close to what ox to bat would, 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 would be giving you for the ship as well just throwing it out there for you all it is a very very good good a good ability if you're a science captain doing EPG with lots of science with lots of science project officer slots, you probably should be using Photonic Officer on your build. For the seats themselves, Photonic Officer 2 is here. I use Gravity Well 3, Titan's Rift 1 with Hazard Meters 1 here. For the other science abilities, Transfer Shield Strength 1, Science Team, and then Destabilizing Resonance Beam 1 here as well. Destabilizing Resonance Beam um, isn't regularly trained. Um, you have to... Um, play i can't remember what mission is specifically i believe it's in the iconium war arc where you get it i believe i believe it's in the iconium war arc where you get a stabilizing resonance beam one two and three once once you get them and use them you can um you can then craft them your, yourselves from from um r d science i i believe yeah um if you uh, want a little bit better ship and willing to pay some zen for it uh, this is the ship I would recommend you use, and you can use basically the exact same build on this ship as well, and it's just much more durable. Um, because we're able to afford a Lieutenant Commander Science on, on the ship as well, you can put the Sea Lizard Resonance Beam up to the Lieutenant Commander slot, which means now we have a free slot to put a Temporal Operative ability in. I like um, Causal Re Reversion. It's a Temporal Operative specific heal which is really really nice you get some additional healing after taking damage um, for a little bit like it literally reverses some of the damage that you would, you would have taken which since we're a science tank that's that's an extremely good heal now for those of you that really want something off of the exchange as well for some extra damage most science builds do have sub subspace vortex in their build it's in some location if, if, if you want to spend some more money from the exchange that's an ability you probably should put on your, on your ship as well but because there's, a, because there's, a, there's no real equivalence to, to this power and this, is, this doesn't set anything else important on on cooldown so it is really nice to have on on your ship too but anyway with all that that said that is it for this video uh, i do have some fun stuff planned coming out um, during the rest of this month so feel free to stay tuned on the channel um and hopefully those of you that are interested in getting into science found this video um interesting obviously this video wasn't meant to um, point out you know the most optimal builds most optimal trades or things this is something that if you're a true free-to-play player these are options that you can use to have a passable science build on on your ship um I, I, again as well in in the description there there will be five builds instead of just two because there, there will be the one for the lucari ship as well as the one for the federation klingon and roman republic ship as well as the multi-mission science vessel from from the sea store as well so yeah feel free to see, see those links if um you're interested in going e e even more depth into this and into the skill trees themselves of what i of what i suggest for you anyway thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day